Luke 21 starts off with the widow's mites. That widow gave two mites, that's all she had. She gave more than anybody else in the house, she gave it all. I really wonder what God could do with us if we gave him all. Amen. And then several in the crowd start praising how beautiful the temple is. Now can I say the house of God ought to be nice. Uh, the house of God ought to be as nice as any one of our own personal homes. Yes, sir. I've been in some churches where they live in sealed houses that are opulent and beautiful and they let the house of God look like a bunch of bums attend there. I think the house of God ought to be as nice as we can make it. Yes, sir. But we do not worship brick and mortar. Right. Amen. We don't worship pews, that's why there's no name tags on them. Amen. We don't worship those things, we worship the Lord. That's why coming or going, you're going to see him on a banner. Hmm? But they started praising the opulence of the temple. And Jesus lets them know that there's coming a day when not even one stone will be upon the other at the temple. And we'll pick up our reading right there in verse number 7. And they asked him, saying, Master... But when shall these things be, and what sign will there be when these things shall come to pass? And he said, Take heed that you be not deceived, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. And the time draweth near, go ye not therefore after them. But when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by then said he unto them nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and great earthquakes shall be in divers places and famines and pestilences and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven let's pray our father we certainly do bless your holy name lord we have been blessed Lord, we are uh, living far beyond our deserving, and we know it's because of the great hand of God. Now, Lord, we thank you that we can come and worship you today. We thank you for these that have chose to walk by faith and not live in fear and in hysteria. We thank you, Lord, for being so good to us. We thank you for the wonderful uh, uh, place you have provided for us to worship but we are more thankful for the people of God we worship with. We're thankful for the word of God, but most importantly, we're thankful for a God who is worthy to be worshiped. Now, Lord, as we come to you this morning, we realize that each and every one under the sound of our voice has faced something, is facing something, or will face something. I pray you'd increase their faith. I pray you would strengthen them. I pray you'd have your way amongst us tonight. Lord, I do pray, if there be any in our midst who's unsaved, that today would be the day the sweet Holy Ghost of God uh, tugs at their hearts, reveals unto them their lost condition, but reveals unto them there is a Savior who loves them and will save them from their sins. Uh, I pray that today would be the day of their salvation. They'd come and give their heart and life to Jesus. Uh, Father, I do pray for this couple Brother Doug mentioned. Uh, Lord, you know who they are. Uh, Lord, I'm glad they love you. I pray, Lord, if they don't know you, they'd come to know you in the free pardon of sins, uh, and then they'd have a real reason uh, to fall in love with the lovely Jesus. Uh, Father, I do pray that you'd continue to bless the efforts in St. Lucia, but I also pray you'd bless the efforts here in Florence uh, that we'd win our Jerusalem, Judea, and the other most parts of the world uh, unto Christ. Uh, God bless our missionaries who are out there on the foreign fields today. Use them abundantly. God bless uh, churches all across this world that's assembled meeting true churches preaching the word of God. Uh, bless their efforts. Do use these times of panic uh, to send revival to your people uh, that it might affect this lost and dying world. Uh, Father, I do pray for Brother Randy and his family. Uh, Lord, you know what they are facing. I pray for his mother. Uh, 
Lord, I pray your will would be done. Lord, thank you for answering prayer. I'm glad that Seth is here today. God, we pray you'd keep your hand on him. Uh, there are others that are sick. I pray you'd touch them. Uh, there are other great needs. I pray you'd move upon them. Uh, God, I pray for the next few minutes you'd put a hedge about us. Uh, we plead the blood of the Lord Jesus over this place. Uh, and Father, we pray you'd do an eternal work in our midst. Uh, send revival. Help your people. Uh, use this unworthy vessel uh, and glorify your name in the presence of thy people and we'll bless you for it. Uh, for it's in the wonderful and holy name of Jesus we ask these things. Uh, amen. Uh, Amen. As a way of introduction, I want to look at these verses uh, and I want to uh, uh, talk about as Jesus is pointing them uh, 2,000 years plus in the future uh, towards some events that will happen uh, in the end times. Uh, can I say first of all, uh, in the end times there will be deception. Uh, look in verse number 8. Uh, the Bible says, uh, And he said, Take heed that you be not deceived, uh, for many shall come in my name, uh, saying, I am Christ, uh, and the time draweth near. Uh, go ye not therefore after them. Uh, can I say the Bible says in John 14, 6, uh, Jesus saith unto them, I am the way, the truth, uh, and the life. Uh, no man cometh unto me uh, but by the Father. Uh, can I say in this day and age, uh, we don't have any that boldly will stand up and proclaim they are Christ, uh, but we have many who stand up and say they are the way uh, when they are not the way. Uh, they are not pointing people to Jesus. Uh, they're pointing people to religion. They're pointing people to activities. They're pointing people to all kinds of events, but they're not pointing them to Jesus. We live in a day and age where you'll find a building on every corner in America, in this part of America, that claims to be a church. But can I say, uh, 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 there is no light coming out from a lot of these places. Uh, uh, they uh, uh, are engrafting people and gripping people uh, into religion uh, and giving them a false false hope uh, where people think that they're saved, uh, where they think they're okay, uh, where they think they're doing a work for God, uh, but Matthew 7 is going to come to play in their life when they stand for before Jesus uh, and they say, did we do many wonderful works in your name? Uh, and he says, depart from ye that ye that worked iniquity, I never knew you. Uh, we live in a day of deception. Uh, uh, you can turn on the internet. Uh, you can turn on the TV. Uh, you can read books that are being written uh, uh, and all that all this religion is going about doing uh, is giving humanism and false hope to people who are truly seeking after God. Uh, it amazes me on Thursday night there was a pastor, a local pastor, you say, you're going to call his name? No, but I'll tell you where he pastors, crossroads. Thursday night on the news said, we're going to walk by faith, not by fear. We're having church. Friday morning, Miss Annette and I are getting ready to go to Miss Taya's daddy's uh, 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 party. He's retired from the military, a Marine after 30 years, uh, had the highest ranking uh, uh, position as a Master Gunny Sergeant in the Marines. Uh, they had a big event for him. Uh, it was a blessing. We're getting ready to go. We had an invitation to go. We're going. We're watching the news, and there's a scroll at the bottom that says, Crossroads is closed Sunday. And the news has come out now to say it's not that they don't have faith in God. They just want to show love to God's people. Mm, exactly. <laughs> I've heard uh, throughout this weekend you can worship through live streaming. Now we stream our services. We do have some folks that are shut in. We have some folks that cannot make it today. And thankfully, uh, when you're on vacation or whatever, you can still watch our services. But can I say, years ago, Member X came out with tapes and they said, is it live or is it Member X? Can I say, uh, you can listen to it on tape, you can watch it online, but it's not the same as being here. There's just something about the presence of God amongst His people that can't be captured on video or tape. There are people being deceived. There are people that are being told they're okay because they've been baptized. There's people that's being told they're okay because they're a member of a church. There are people that are being told they're okay for all kinds of reasons. They'll say, God loves you just as you are. God loves you. 
but he hates your sin. And he's angry with the wicked every day. And those who are unsaved, the Bible says they're at in enmity with God. They are the enemies of God. God does love you, but God will not receive you until you come and repent of your sins and become a believer in Him. My dear friends, we find there is deception on every corner. I'm glad a lot of places started calling themselves fellowships because that's all they are. They just get there and hang out. That's not a church. Jesus loved the church and gave himself for it. Hmm? And so we find there's a bunch of deception. I've got to move on. I've preach here for all day. Can I say in the end times we find there will be discord? Look what it says in verse number 9. But when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified. Lord have mercy, in the last week all we've heard is commotion. And it amazes me. Let me just stop here and chase a rabbit. They tell us we can't have church, but they didn't close movie theaters. They didn't close uh, gas stations. You realize when you stopped and got gas, you punched your codes in and all that on them little buttons, and you told them you didn't want a receipt or you wanted a receipt and all that stuff. You, you got germs. You do know that, don't you? They didn't close gas stations. They didn't clo gro close grocery stores, although people uh, went in and panicked, and then they had to spend the last two days saying, this is not an epidemic. You don't have to hoard up all the toilet paper, Ray Roberts, because uh, some of your neighbors might need some. Miss Annette said, well, we probably grill, all the kids are home, we'll probably grill out Saturday. So we went to buy hot dog buns. There's not a hot dog bun in northern Kentucky. <laughs> Had to eat hot dogs without a bun. I mean, it's crazy. Mass hysteria. He says, be not terrified. Amen. Amen. Well, see, I had several independent Baptist preachers reach out to me this week wanting to know what we was going to do. Be not terrified. Huh? Can I say the Bible says perfect love casts out all fear. If you love the Lord right, you're not afraid of any of this stuff. Bless God, Brother Aaron. I've read the trail of the blood. I've read Fox's Book of Martyrs. I've read when people, they threaten them, if you don't deny Jesus Christ, you're going to be burned at the stake, and they'd go and stand at the stake. So light her up. Today they say, don't shake hands with somebody, you might die. And people become closed up in their houses, afraid of everything. And it tells me they don't have what them folks in that Fox's Book of Martyrs had. They don't love God right. Jesus is commanding his disciples. You're going to hear commotions. Be not terrified. Amen. Yeah, people are scared to death. Well, let's read on. For these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. He said, In the last days, in the end times, there will be discord. The last time I checked, there's over 130 wars, including civil wars, going on in the world right now. Can I say, in the Middle East alone, there's wars among different tribal units. I mean, they're killing themselves over there. But it's not just some foreign fields. Can I say, in the streets of America, there are people killing each other. There are gangs against gangs. Uh, uh, there's uh, uh, races against races. There's division even in America. Even our own political system. Uh, 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 I've never seen it as partisan as it is right now. Uh, uh, they're against one another, different ideologies and all kinds of things. Uh, uh, they were elected on behalf of the people, but they get to D.C. and they forget about the people that elected them. He said there'll be discord, disagreement, division. But not only that, in the end times we find there'll be disasters. Look what it says in verse 11. And great earthquakes shall be in divers places, and famines and pestilences and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. Can I say, 150 years ago you never heard of an earthquake. 
110 years ago, there was one earthquake in the entire decade. Can I say there's nowhere in the world that there's not some kind of tremor of earthquake going on every single day. Earthquakes are so common when you see them on the news, it doesn't even impact us anymore. You'll hear one in Indonesia, you'll hear one in Mexico, you'll hear one here, you'll hear one there. California has them constantly. And we don't give a second thought of it. It said earthquakes in diverse places. Can I say this? It says, uh, not only that, famines. There are parts of the world that cannot grow food. There are parts of the world that are starving to death. There are parts of the world that America helps feed and other nations help feed. There are famines in certain parts of the world. Can I say that it says there will be pestilences? Used to, when preachers preached on pestilences, they'd preach on the plagues that had infected Egypt. Frogs and locusts and flies and all those kind of things. Have you ever seen what a disease looks like under a microscope? It's pretty frightful. Well, we don't have problems with flies and killer bees and, and all that kind of stuff. We have problems with diseases that some of those things carry. Have you ever heard of the epidemic of cancer? There's not one family that I know of that doesn't have somebody in their family that's been affected by cancer. As we sit here right, ne right today, in the last year, there have been five folks that are sitting here today that's had cancer, just in our church. That's not talking about how many of us in our families have had people that have had cancer. Hmm. I'd say that's a pestilence. There's no cure for it. Oh, they have all kinds of things to treat it, but you've still got to go and make sure it hadn't popped back up. Hmm. I say th that is something we ought to be concerned about. Hmm? Heart disease is the number one killer in America. You know why folks have heart disease? Because we're all stressed out. Life was a lot better when we just sat on the porch and ate everything that was baked in lard and counted cars that went by the road. I, I know I'm getting old, but I remember those days. I remember the big deal. Miss Lynn, you remember the big deals when we got to go to Whitley to your grandma and grandpa's house, my great-grandma and grandpa's house, and sit on the porch swing and watch for semi-trucks come by and move our hands up and down hoping they'd honk the horn. Now I get on the highway and I'm honking my horn at them suckers everywhere I go. They're slowing me down, huh? Life was a lot better when it was slower paced. Boy, would to God we'd go back to Mayberry. Hmm? You turn on Mayberry now with these kids, they're bored to death. What kind of show is this? This is what it should be, kid. No, huh? Life was better when Barney Fife was in charge. You nip it in the bud. But we're not there anymore. People are stressed out. We have all kinds of diseases that affect us. And then we get these viruses that are popping up. Hmm? Pestilences that affect people, affect families. And can I say, it's all pointing to the end times. It goes on to say, fearful sights, great signs shall there be from heaven. You know, we got folks here from Alaska, and I don't know how long they've been having those northern lights, but they didn't become popular until just a couple decades ago. Everybody started talking about northern lights. That's a great sign from heaven. That's a sight from the heavens. Huh? They look beautiful on TV. I can't imagine what they look like in person. Of course, I don't want to give up, you know, 23 days of, or 23 hours in a day's total sunlight. You know, I don't want to live in the... You know, God bless you all if you've got that going on where you live. Huh? Uh, but I'm telling you, there are some tremendous wonders that we never knew about until all of a sudden we had satellites that we could see around the globe. And there are also some very traumatic things. Some of these tsunamis and some of these hurricanes and some of these floods and some of these natural wonders that are eroding our lands. What are you trying to say, preacher? I'm trying to say... These things will happen in the end times. If you hadn't figured it out, we're there. 
And I want to preach with God's help for just a minute on this thought. With all the course of events in the last few few days, and God has burned this in my heart. And watching and listening and seeing how people react and see all the chaos that is going on in our country and how our very freedoms are being attacked with the signature on a piece of paper. I want to preach with God's help on this thought. Inching towards the Antichrist. Inching toward the Antichrist. Now let me qualify this. If you're blood, blood washed, born again, saved, child of God, it don't matter who the Antichrist is because we're not going to be here. If you are a student of astrology, you realize the next great event and prophecy is the translation of the saints, the rapture of the church, the catching away of the saints, however you want to call it. In Revelation 4, uh, uh, John said there was a window open in heaven. He heard come up hither and he was there. Are you listening? Uh, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, uh, we're going to be changed. We're going to put off incorruption, put, on cor uh, uh, put off corruptible and put on incorruption. Uh, we're going to put off this body of clay and take up a body like the Son of God, uh, 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 the Lord. Lord Jesus is going to step out on the clouds uh, uh, with a shout, with a trump. Uh, uh, the archangel is going to blow. Uh, hey, the dead in Christ are going to rise uh, uh, first. And then we which are alive and remain be caught up together to be with them. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Uh, comfort one another with these words. Uh, hallelujah. The next great event's a trumpet's going to sound and God's people are out of here. Amen. Can I say I'm no great prophecy guru but Jesus said uh, when nation will become an, uh, uh, when the nation of Israel will become a nation again he said this generation shall not pass away before all these things come to pass now for years date setters tried to say a generation in the Bible was 40 years so they all you know 1988 uh, that was it well the Bible says no man knows the day or the hour even the Lord Jesus don't know only the father knows when it's going to happen. So if somebody tells you they know when the Lord's coming, you mark that joker, they're a liar. Okay? But can I say this? He is coming. Yes, sir. Amen. And can I say this? That God advanced a generation in the Old Testament to 70 years, and then He said if you live beyond that, you were blessed. So we don't know when a generation is going to pass, but we do know that Israel became a nation in 1948. We know that we're getting close. And can I say this about uh, 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 the being blessed in the 70 years and everything? We base everything on the Roman Greco calendar. God bases it on His calendar with His people in Jerusalem, the Israeli calendar. That's why Easter is never at the same time every year. Because the Jews' calendar is different than ours. But can I say this? We're getting close. But I do know this, that he's talking about his literal coming in all these prophecies. The rapture of the church is not his literal coming. We rise to meet him in the air. There's coming a day he's coming back and he's going to sit on the throne of David and he's going to rule and reign with a thousand years and us that are redeemed are going to come back and rule with him and what a blessing it'll be. But can I say before he comes, literally back to this earth, seven years prior the church is out of here. The Antichrist will not be revealed till he's out of here. A lot of people trying to figure out who the Antichrist is. I don't care. I'm looking for the Christ. And anything that is anti the Christ, I don't care. Are you listening? But we are inching towards the Antichrist. I hope you've been paying attention because a lot of the events that have happened in the last week are things he's going to do. And nothing happens by accident or chance. These things have been enacted to desensitize people or to get them ready for when someone who's in charge will tell them how to live. Make no mistake, this is just another way to soften the blow of what's to come. It's just like all these grotesque vampire movies and all these zombie movies. You do realize in the book of Revelation it talks about beasts coming out of the ground and killing people. And you read what that beast looks like, that scorpion-type beast, and what it looks like. Hey, zombies look pretty good. 
You say, what are you trying to say? Satan is preparing people for things that come out of the ground that will haunt them. Everything is being done to desensitize people. Amen. To just where they hear preaching and it doesn't affect them. Hmm? So can I say we're inching towards the Antichrist? Can I say, first of all, under his rule, the Antichrist will ensure a society of communism. There will be a one-world government and a one-world religion under his rule. Let me say this. He'll have a seven-year rule. The first 42 months of his rule, things go pretty smoothly. The second 42 months, total anarchy will be on this earth. Jeremiah calls it the time of Jacob's trouble. Daniel says there's never been a time like that time when men will be terrified because they rejected Jesus Christ. But can I say under his rule, there'll be communism, a one world government, a one world system. Revelation 13, 16 says, and he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save uh, he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And his number is 666. Can I say? There will be a one world system. Let me give you a little bit about communism in case you're a Bernie Sanders fan, okay? Communism is the system in which the entire land or property is owned by a community. Communism brings power in the hands of a selected few who usurp the entire land of the region and rule over it. Other people inhabiting the area are brought under subjugation by these communists. Communism is a bane for the society since ordinary people have no liberty to express themselves. Under communism, the Bernie Sanders rule and tell you what you can and cannot do and you have no say. Can I say this week there were events that people have worked all their life for canceled and you have no say over it. They said you can't and you won't. Do you know the city of Cincinnati, the mayor who is a liberal among liberals, the mayor announced that the city of Cincinnati, he declared a state of emergency. Now, I don't really give much of what the city of Cincinnati does because that council's crazy. But I did hear what that meant. That meant... If you live in the city of Cincinnati, they can tell you when and when you can't leave your house. They can instill a curfew, and they can tell you you can't leave your house. He can also stop the sale of gasoline. He can also stop the uh, uh, buying of, of uh, firearms and ammunition. Amen. He is one step from declaring martial law in the city of Cincinnati which you'll do what they say when they say it, or you won't do it at all. It's communism. Amen. Can I say this? Communism says this. Communism teaches and seeks two objectives. Unrelenting class warfare and the complete eradication of private ownership. Some of you have worked a long time to own your home. Under communism, you lose it. It belongs to the state. Under communism, you own nothing. And under communism, you have no say over it. Do you realize Bernie Sanders' platform is to tax the average American 90%? The Lord only requires 10%. I think I'll stick with Jesus. Hmm? They've asked him how he's going to pay for all this free stuff he's going to give. He says, I have no idea, but the money will be there. Used to, he said, he used to uh, really plight against millionaires, but now that it's been revealed he's one of them, now he only plights against billionaires. Yeah. And by the way, he owns three homes. He is so poor, he has to have three homes. Yeah. They question him about that. He says, well, I need those. Can I say this about communism? It is the opiate of the intellectuals with no cure 
except as a guillotine might be called a cure for dandruff. Under the Antichrist system, people will have no liberty. That's why you better trust in Jesus because He sets you free. Can I say we're inching toward the Antichrist? His rule will ensure communism, but not only that, His rule will ensure control. People will have to depend upon Him and the government. Is that not what our government is seeking these days? For us to depend on them for information, for the new uh, uh, medicine to contract this uh, hysterical virus that's going on. We have to depend on them. Well, can I say this? Literally, during the Antichrist reign, he will be in control. You will have to depend on him. The Antichrist will have complete control over food sources. If you don't receive the mark of the beast, you can't buy or sell or get food. It'll be a cashless society. Hmm. And by the way, can I say, if you've heard the gospel under the grace dispensation, 2 Thessalonians tells us when the church is raptured out, the Lord will bring strong delusion on you to where you'll believe a lie, you'll take the mark of the beast, and you'll be damned. Can I say this, that book series that come out left behind, that you've got another opportunity to be saved? Not if you've heard the gospel. God will make a way for folks to be redeemed during the tribulation period, but they've got to become martyrs or be willing to become a martyr. Well, I'd rather just get saved by grace, wouldn't you? Hmm. You say, why is it going to be so hard? Because re people rejected the grace of God. And if they want to accept the free will offering of God given Himself, given His Son for their sins, if they won't accept Jesus Christ, do you think they'd be willing to die for Him? Yep. The Antichrist will control the food sources. He'll control all the finances and He'll control the freedoms. I kind of pinned this down. We saw a glimpse of it when we put the Patriot Act into, into play after September 11th. People will relinquish all rights and freedoms for the hope of safety and basic needs. You know why people are sitting in their home today, you know, sitting there twiddling their thumbs and wringing their hands out, worried about catching some coronavirus because the government told them there's a risk and to stay home. So for their own safety, they'll listen to what the government said. They'll listen to what the corrupt media says. Oh, is there a chance you could get sick? Sure. There's also a chance an airplane will fall out of the sky and hit you too. I choose not to live in fear. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Hmm? I just believe, as Paul said, he that began a work in you is able to complete that work. Hmm? I know people won't stay in a motel. They're afraid of getting bed bugs. I know people won't get on an airplane. They're fe fearful it's going to fall. You've got a better chance of getting where you're getting on an airplane than you do driving down 75. I know people that, that won't get on a cruise ship, you know, afraid it's going to sink. I know people won't do this, won't do that. I refuse to live in fear. I just walk through doors the Lord opens for me. Hmm? I'm just, I, I just don't understand. Big Doug, what if you had to drive everywhere you went? Wouldn't that be a blessing? Yeah, it'd be rough. You couldn't get everywhere you need to go. There are people so afraid. We'll go on a trip. People, aren't you afraid? Aren't you afraid? No. Can I say, I've known the Lord for 45 years. He's been taking good care of me. Mm. Huh? Been good to me. This coming Wednesday, I will know him for 46 years. There have been a lot of times I've let him down, but he's never let me down. Hmm? I'll just hang with him. It'll be all right. Hmm? Can I say, uh, what the Antichrist longs for is control. You know what a lot of these politicians want? They want to control you. They think they know what's better for your life than you do. Yeah. Can I say, when the Antichrist shows up, his rule will ensure containment. 
There'll be martial law instilled. You won't just go where you want to go. Hmm? Right now, if you decide you want to go to Disney World, good luck, you ain't getting in, it's closed. But you could hop in your car and drive to Orlando and wait till they open it. Under the Antichrist, you won't. You've got to get permission. Can I say, people will be ordered on where they can go, what they can do, and when they can do it. You say, I don't believe all that. Do you know right now, when you pass them state signs that say, welcome to uh, Kentucky, welcome Miss Billy to West Virginia, welcome to wherever you're going. You know, a lot of them already have cameras. They take pictures of your license plate. They know where you've been. Do you know if you've got a cell phone on you, every time you pass one of them towers that gives you better reception, it pings that tower. They can tell where you've been, how long you've been there, and what you do. You know, every time you pay for something with a credit card, they know where you are. Can I say there's coming a point where they're going to demand where you are and they'll know whether you're, not, you're there or not. Do you realize there's security cameras everywhere? You go in any store, you'll see security cameras. Bless God, we got some here. But you know they have software right now where they can recognize your face and pick your face out of a crowd through security cameras. Can I say if Hollywood is showing it, they've already had it for years. I'm just trying to tell you, it's all about controlling people. And we're headed that way. Can I say the devil's more ready for the rapture of the church than God's people are? Amen. We're inching toward the Antichrist. Not only will he ensure containment, he will also calm fears. Isn't that what a lot of this uh, media has been ever since they announced you can't do anything? They've been having people on who's trying to calm your fear. Just stay at home. Just stay within six feet of people. Just keep wash your hands. Just take a bath in, in alcohol, and just you know do all this stuff. And you know you got a, a, a slight hope of of surviving this thing. Well, the facts are you got a ninety eight percent chance of surviving if you contact it. They're contracted. But can I say, the Antichrist is going to be all about damage control. He's going to be like the prophets in Jeremiah's day. He's going to come in and cry, peace, peace, when there is no peace. Now, let me just set the table. Will you agree with me that there are people listening to this media, they have created a hysteria in our country? I mean, everything's closed. Everybody's afraid to go anywhere and do it. I mean, fear, fear, fear. They're fear mongers. They've been doing it all along. You just don't pick up on it. That's why they'll tell you 10 days ahead of time it's going to snow. So you go buy all the food in the grocery store so you get one flake. You know where the real flakes are? It's the weather people. But they have created a hysteria. Now somebody said this morning, I forget who it was, said something about, Preacher, what if uh, when the Lord takes us out in the rapture, they just say it was a coronavirus that killed everybody? They'll have something. They've got to come up with something. Can you imagine? It, our countries went crazy over about 2,000 cases of people being infected with this thing. 2,000. Do you realize under the swine flu, 60 million people got it? 60 million. A fifth of our congregation got it. We're talking about amongst 340 million people, some three or 4,000 people have been infected. Now think about that. That is very small odds. But they have shut down everything and they've created a mass hysteria. What are they going to do when the Lord takes the church out and all them crazy Bible-believing, God-trusting, gun-fearing, patriotic Christians are gone? I mean, gone. No sign of them. Somewhere, somebody's going to be in church. They're going to come in. They're going to find all the clothes, all the eyeglasses, all, all, all the false teeth, uh, everything. It wasn't you. It's all going to be left in the floor. Uh, uh, it's going to be a bloody mess. Everything's just going to be boom. We're gone. I don't think they're going to be able to say Sasquatch got all of us. Huh? How about all them alien shows that are on now? Huh? Everywhere you turn, you got aliens. So the aliens are somewhere. They're all parked in a mountain somewhere. Huh? They come out of George Washington's eye in Mount Rushmore. That's where the aliens are. 
They come out at night and they sap up uh, people from uh, trailer parks and they tell them how, how bad it was, huh? How come they, no, no doctor or lawyer ever gets sapped up by an alien? It's always some drunk from a trailer park. <laughs> missing half his teeth. Yeah, they abducted me. I'm here to tell you they're going to come up with something to explain away what happened to all of us. Hmm? The Bible says this about the Antichrist when he comes on the scene. I'm talking about it, he's going to have to calm some fears. Daniel 11, 21 says, And in his estate shall stand up a vile person to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in peaceably and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. He's going to have all the answers. And everybody's going to be drawn to him. And everybody's going to look. You remember what the Bible says about Satan, that he can be transformed into an angel of light. He's not in a red suit with horns and a pitchfork, I'm telling you. What can I say? His son, the Antichrist, is going to be able to woo people and calm their fears. Let me say about this lastly. We're inching toward the Antichrist. When he shows up, he's going to ensure condemnation. The whole sole reason Satan fights so hard against God's people is he doesn't want you to be a light, a testimony to lost people because he wants to damn them to hell. He controls them. He owns them. He don't like giving them up. And Satan's whole purpose, he knows his future, and he wants to take everybody he can with him. The Bible says in Daniel 12, 1, and at that time shall Michael stand up the great prince which standeth for the, peop for the children of thy, pe thy people and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to the same time and at that time thy people shall be delivered every one that shall be found written in the book. Thanks be unto God for those martyrs that come out of the great tribulation period. But it's going to be a time of trouble. Why? Revelation 16.2 at, and the first went talk about the vial of God's wrath and poured out his vial upon the earth and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshipped his image can I say those that trust in the antichrist and the mark of the beast are damned and condemnation is coming to them let me just summarize all this. Brother Doug, what's this coronavirus about? It's just a ploy to get people ready for when that sorry booger the Antichrist shows up. We're inching that way. I'd like to tell you, you got another 10, 15, 20 years. I don't know. Might. But the Lord might come tonight. Can I say, when it comes to Bible prophecy, as far as I can read it and understand it, Everything has been fulfilled that needs to be fulfilled for the Lord Jesus to take his church out of here. Could happen today. The choir sang that song, I know my name is written there. Yes. Friend, do you know the Lord Jesus? What are you waiting on? Right. Amen. Jesus gave his disciples the signs of the end times. We read you some of them. That It's happening. I've tried to the best of my ability to point out just some things in the last week that should show you this thing's all unfolding before our eyes. Are, do you know the Lord? Are you ready? If not, I'd get ready. And if you are ready, I'd ask God to give me a burden for somebody that's not ready. I'd ask God to break my heart for sinners. I'd ask God to make me a light that will draw them to Jesus. Amen. My dear friends, people all around us are dying and going to hell. We're worried about coronavirus. There's a worse case out there. It's called sin. Amen. And sin gets all of their, uh, all of its inhabitants. I preached on that last week. Every sinner dies. We're all going to die. But I'm glad I've been saved by the grace of God. Yes. I died out to sin. And I'm glad I have eternal life. Do you today? If you're not saved in the moment, we're going to have an invitation. We invite you to come. If you come, we'll take a Bible and show you how to be saved. You can be saved today. If you're here today and you're saved, you ought to rejoice in that you're saved, but what are you doing to ensure other people are going with you? 
Some of you got lost family members. You ought to get a burden for them. Say, God, if I can't win them, send somebody to them. Hmm. I just got a letter in the mail this morning from a church in Missouri that's got a, a ministry to the military base. Said they want a boy to the Lord. He came to church just a couple times and he moved, he come home. He's in this area. Preacher, can you reach out to him? This, this week I'm going to reach out to him. If he got saved being in the military, he's probably got fa family members that aren't saved. He needs a church where he can grow in the Lord. There are folks we need to reach out to, get them prepared, because this thing's winding down. Are you ready? Are you ready? We're inching toward the Antichrist. God's people ought to be running towards God. For such a time as this, God might allow all this to transpire so God's people get sober. Paul wrote there in Romans, I believe it's chapter 12, it's high time that we wake up, for our salvation is nearer than when we believed. It's about time we get busy about God's business. No telling what He'll do if we get sober about the times we live in. Let's all stand, Brother Ray. Come get a song of invitation. If you don't know the Lord, we'll pray that you'll trust Him before it's everlasting too late. While they're getting ready and people are coming, let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for the Scriptures. Lord, I know I didn't do justice to those thoughts that you put in my heart, but I... I pray that, Lord, the sweet Holy Ghost of God would now do a work with our feeble efforts. I pray that Christians would be set on fire and revived for the honor and glory of God. Lord, I'd like to see us go out in a blaze of glory. God, I pray for anybody under the sound of our voice this morning that is not saved. I pray that something we'd said would open their eyes. Now the Holy Ghost of God would deal with them. They'd open their hearts. And they'd come and repent of their sins and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray you'd bless this invitation, speak to hearts, and get glory to your glorious name. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.